Shalom. Today we are going to start a new series about understanding Hebrew verb structure. As you probably know, Hebrew is a verb-oriented language, and uh, most of uh, the vocabulary is based on three-letter root verb action words. The rest of Hebrew grammar is actually quite simple, but the verb structure is unlike any other language except perhaps Aramaic. And so the idea of it is very foreign to most learners' minds. And so this will not nearly be a comprehensive study, but just enough for you to get your toes wet, to understand how the verb structure works, and some of the pointers that we can look at when we're trying to analyze uh, Hebrew language, the Hebrew literature, as we're looking at it. Because Hebrew is a very dense language, uh, many times there are prefixes, infixes, and suffixes that are attached to the verb root. And so you might uh, feel like this as you are trying to break these things apart and find out what the verb root is. Many times if you open a Hebrew grammar, you're going to find a page like this. And part of the problem of the history of Hebrew grammars is that the authors of the textbooks were already quite familiar with other ancient languages like Latin or Greek and tried to fit the schematics of a Hebrew into those formats and it doesn't fit well because it's a very different language. What what this page is is a, a complete breakdown of how one verb would look in all its different formats. Uh, this is actually just the past tense but uh, they have chosen a completely useless route which only appears, I think, three times in the entire Tanakh. At least they could have picked something useful that you could uh, learn some meanings from. But when you open a page like this, you just want to run away with your hair on fire. So I'm going to try and give you a more organic view of how Hebrew works, especially, particularly, the verb structure. As we said, Hebrew is based on a three-letter root. The word for root in Hebrew is shoresh, and we see that in the middle. And the conjugation of, uh, of the verb will reflect all these items which are placed around it. It will reflect the tense, which you know what that is, the past or the present or the future. It will affect the person, which uh, will be I or you or David or that guy over there or all all y'all, which is a very special pronoun that we use here in the South. The binyan we're going to talk about a lot more and explain what does the binyan mean. And the root might be also attached to a conjunction like and or uh, a relative pronoun or an object pronoun. So we need to know all these things going into understanding the roots as we can analyze each word in the text. Now, the unique concept to Hebrew and Aramaic concerning the verbs is the binyan. The word binyan uh, actually means building in modern Hebrew. It comes from the root bana, uh, bet nun he, which means to build. And in all these textbooks from the past, it is variously translated as mood or aspect, conjugation, voice, derived parts, stem, and none of these is very helpful in explaining to you what the binyan is. So here is a binyan chart, and uh, I have used this in several other uh, presentations that I've done. The verbs are divided up into seven of these binyanim, binyan, and uh, I've put the uh, 
active ones on the left and the passive ones on the right. The first is a pa'al. It's also called kal. Kal just means the simplest one. Uh, these three active voices have three corresponding passive voices. We're going to discuss what active and passive are in a minute. Uh, we have a pal. The passive for that is the pu'al. We have a hefil. The active, or the passive for that is the hofal. And then we have a hitpa'el, which is a reflexive verb. And we're going to describe what all this means. So you notice that in the names of all the binyanim is the verb root pa'al, pe ayin lamed. And the reason that this word comes to mean and be associated with the word verb is that it means action. It means to do something, to make or do something. Exodus 15:17, Thou shalt bring them in and plant them in the mountain of thy inheritance in the place, Yahweh, which thou hast made for thee to dwell in, in the sanctuary, O Lord, which thy hands have established. So this is the root, pa'al, to make. Numbers 23, 23. Surely there is no enchantment against Jacob, neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob and of Israel, what hath God wrought? Uh, I was happy to learn that this was a biblical quote. So wrought, wrought is an old word that means to make something. We still use it in the English phrase wrought iron. That's very fancy iron work that people make with different tools. So the idea of pa'al, that word, a pe'ayin lamed, that we see in the midst of all the names of the binyanim, this is a word that means action, making, or doing. That is how the word pa'al comes to mean verb. Looking at two examples in the Hebrew, Psalm 15.2, Holech tamim, uh, he who is walking in a blameless way, ufo'el tzedek, and who does what is righteous, v'dover emet belibavo, who speaks uh, truth in his heart. So we see that is the action of doing tzedek, doing what is righteous. Psalm 11.3 Ki hashatot yeharesun tzedek ma pa'al If, in fact, the foundations are destroyed or removed, the righteous man, what pa'al, what can he do? Okay, we're going to look at this chart again. We're going to look at it many times because it is the basis for understanding the Hebrew verb structure. The simplest form in the active form is sometimes called the call, but it does have a name which fits in with using this uh, pa'al uh, verb root, stem root, to define these binyanim. Pa'al, pa'al and kal are the same. Kal just means simple. Uh, the corresponding passive is the nifal. A little more intensive is the pl. Its corresponding passive is the pu'al. We're going to discuss what active and passive are. Just sit tight. The hefil is a causative form. The hofal is its corresponding passive. And the hitpa'el is a reflexive form. We're going to get to what all these things mean. Okay, so here is active passive and reflexive. In the active form, in the present tense, I write a letter. In the passive voice, I say the letter is written by me. So in the active voice of the verb, that means that the subject of the sentence, I, is doing the action writing the letter. I write a letter. The passive form, the subject of the sentence, the letter, is not doing anything. It is receiving the action of the verb. The letter is written by me. And so we can see that the active and passive can 
can occur in the present tense, in the past tense, or in the future tense. It can appear uh, in all three tenses, the active and the passive. And the reflexive is something usually that we either, the ideas we do to ourselves. Uh, for example, if I dress myself, that will be a different binyan in Hebrew than if I dress my child. We're going to get to all of it. So here is the idea in the word actually write in Hebrew, kotev, in the reflexive is that you and I write letters to each other. We go back and forth. So we can see that uh, the active and passive and reflexive can all appear in all three tenses. We should be familiar with tense. We use it in English, past, present, and future. The actual binyan defines whether a verb is active, passive, or reflexive. We have three active binyanim, pa'al, piel, and hifil. We have three passive binyanim, nifal, pu'al, and hofal. We have one reflexive binyan, hitpa'el. And when we look at the conjugation of any verb, because each one conjugates slightly differently, that is how the vowels are put in there, then when we look at the verb, we can see, is it active, passive, or reflexive? Now, blueletterbible.org, I highly re recommend as a place for study. And I'm going to show you how you can find the binyanim for every verb on Blue Letter Bible. So here's a screenshot. We're looking at uh, Isaiah 21 11. So if you pull the uh, scripture up off to the left, you see a, a place that says tools. If you click on that and then you click on interlinear, you will see the verse in Hebrew. Okay, so I have clicked on the interlinear. You can see that the interlinear tab there is bigger and it's highlighted on the left. I have highlighted the word shomer. Here's our favorite verb root. And we're going to investigate the binyan and tense of shomer using the Blue Letter Bible. So I had to come down a little bit on the screen, and you see that the, that the word uh, is highlighted. And we can see that it's translated here as watchman. It tells us the Strong's number, 8104. It shows us the Hebrew, the transliteration, shamar, shamar. This is for the root, not how it's used in the uh, sentence. In the, in the actual scripture, it says shomer. And then there's a uh, button off to the right that says parse. I have, I have clicked on that. And what I get now, it says parsing information. You can see on the right. The shamar is how the root is listed. And then it's tr uh, transliterated, shamar. The stem, which is what, what the binyan is, is kal. And the aspect, which we would consider to be the tense, is the active participle. This is the present tense. So they use some different terminology, but you can get used to the idea. The stem is the binyan. We're going to look at some more, so we have some more examples. Here is another screenshot from the Blue Letter Bible. This is Psalms 37:28. I have highlighted the word nishmaru. If we come down to uh, where the root is shamar, it is translated they are preserved. I have hit the, clicked on the parse button. Here's the parsing information. You see it's the same root, shamar. It's uh, listed in the, um, the, the verbs are always listed in the third person masculine singular, past tense, pa'al. Very simple, okay? 
We see here that it says stem. Remember the stem is the binyan, and you should recognize the name of this nifal. It's a passive tense. Therefore, the, the saints are not doing anything. It, the translation is that they are preserved. Someone else is shamar. Someone else is guarding them. And they are receiving the action of being guarded. So we can tell from this conjugation, nishmaru, that it is a nifal. The aspect here is perfect. Remember, the aspect is what we would call the tense. It's the past tense. The saints are guarded. The saints are preserved. We have one more example here showing the Blue Letter Bible from Jonah 2.8. You see the first word is Mishamrim. If you come down and look at it uh, in the uh, interlinear, you will see that it has the same root, Shamar, uh, Strong's 8104. If we look in the parsing information, you just have to click once on that parse box there. It will show you the root in the simple form. It tells you the stem. This stem here is PL. That, remember, that's the binyan. The aspect is participle. That means uh, the present tense. We're going to go over the tenses later. And uh, we can tell from the way the verb is structured. It has a mem prefix. It has a plural ending, a plural present tense ending, that this is a PL participle. So all that is revealed uh, through the prefixes, the suffixes, the vowels, and eventually we can learn all those forms. They're all actually very regular, even though there are a lot of them. They're very regular, and we can learn through those forms what binyan we're looking at. So we're going to look at a few more scriptural examples, just comparing the forms of how the uh, vowels, prefixes, and suffixes are added. We're going to use this root shamar. So what we want to do here is just compare some different vowel structures with prefixes and suffixes and see how that affects the meaning of the verb. We will get into more specific details later, but in this portion of the teaching, I just want to show you uh, what some of these things look like. Okay, from Isaiah 21.11, we see twice here the same word repeated, shomer, and uh, you know this scripture. It says, watchman, what of the night? Watchman, what of the night? So the shomer there is a present tense participle. It's in the pa'al, the call, the simplest form. And it means the one who is watching. In the Song of Songs, we see a very simple plural, Hashomrim. It's also a present tense participle. It is the ones who are watching, the ones who are guarding. Uh, these are the two examples we already looked at in the Blue Letter Bible. In Psalm 3728, we see nishmaru, we see the nun prefix, and a different ending for a plural. They are guarded. It's a passive form. And in the Jonah 2.9, mishamrim, here, uh, it's, a, it's a PL form. It has a familiar plural ending. It's a present tense participle verb. The ones who are not so much guarding, I think as translated in the King James as observing. Those who keep uh, worthless idols. The idea of uh, observing them or uh, worshiping them. Here's another root. Zion Resh Ayin, Zera, it means seed. In Isaiah 55:10, we see that uh, a well-known verse, as the rain and snow 
fall to the ground from the sky and they don't return back to the sky, but they water the earth and cause it to sprout forth and give zera le zorea, seed to the sower, the one who spreads the seed, the one who's putting the seed in the ground. This is a pa'al form. It is a present tense form. The one who is doing the action and we can tell that because of the vowels which are on the root uh, Zara Zion Rish Ayin. In Genesis 1 12 we see the same root we see a mem prefix a yud infix this tells us that it's a present tense a participle he feel form it's a causative form so when we have to translate this in English, we have to say that the, the plant produces the seed. But in Hebrew, it's a very specific mazria. It's the one who's causing the seed. When the plant produces a seed, that is different than the person who goes out and puts the seed in the ground. It's very, very clear in Hebrew. We're going to see many times in English, uh, even for example, the participle, my, uh, the, the passive might look like the past tense. We don't make so many distinctions within the forms of our words, but Hebrew is very specific in this sense. Another root, which you probably know, Lamad, Lamid, Mem, Dalid. We'll see what difference the Binyanim make on the translation. In De Deuteronomy 4.10, we see the same root used twice, and you can see that if there were no vowels, these two words would look exactly the same. But because of the vowels, we can see that they're two different binyanim, and they have two different meanings. Uh, Moses is reminding the people of uh, the day that they stood at Horeb, and God said he would cause them to hear the words, Asher yil medun le Le year oti that they will learn. Yilmadun tells us that that is they will learn to fear oti me, in other words, Yahweh, all their days. And then the last one, Yilamedun, they will teach them to their sons. So in English, teach and learn are two completely different ideas. In Hebrew, it's very logical. The pa'al form is to learn. The pl form, it's a little intensive, is to teach. In Psalm 1835, again, we see the same root. It's got a mem prefix. And uh, in this case, it is the pl. Who, uh, the one who is teaching, Yadai le Milchama, Melamed, Yadai le Milchama, who teaches my hands to war for, or for battle. Okay, in First Chronicles 25.7, also a mem prefix, but now we have a different uh, vowel under the Lamed, and this is the Pu'al. This is the passiform, the ones who are taught. Okay, they have been taught to sing here, shear. So they're not doing any teaching. They are the receivers of the teaching. It's a passive, it's the pu'al form. We're going to look at one more root, bet, vav, aleph, bo which means in the pa'al, it means to come. We're just going to see how it looks in some different binyanim. Just get an idea of the meanings. Okay, in Genesis 6.13, um, God is speaking to Noah, and he says, Ketz kol basar ba'lefanai. The end of all flesh has come before me. Now, uh, it happens that in this kind of verb form with a bob in the middle, sometimes we can't tell the difference between the past and 
the present tense. And maybe it's not that critical for this translation. Uh, in Genesis 7.1, we see this form bow. And you'll notice in both of these, the vav is missing. We're going to talk about that later, why that happens. We'll talk about it further on in the series. But this is a command form, bo'ata, you come. In Genesis 4.4, 4, we see the he feel of this verb, the causative. What is the causative idea of to come? If I cause my book to come to class, in English we say, I bring my book to class. So the he feel form of this root, bet vav aleph, is to bring. The pa'al idea is to come. The he feel, the causative idea, is to bring. And we see that Hevel uh, is um, bringing his first, his, uh, the first of his flocks. Second Kings 22.4 um, we see it's also the same root, ha muva. I think probably the he is uh, actually um, a definite article prefix. And the rest of the word there is muva. And this is the hofal form. It is that which is brought. It's a passive form. It's the kesef, the, the money, the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord. Now I would suggest that you take a little break. Uh, try and apply a little bit of what we have learned. Uh, use your Blue Letter Bible and go and just familiarize yourself with the idea of parsing, how to see what the root is, how to see what the binyan is. Remember, it's a stem how to see what the tense is. Remember that says aspect there. And uh, see how the words are translated differently according to the, to the binyanim. We will get into much more detail in the following lessons. But I would just suggest for now that you learn the names of the binyanim. You can't really understand. You can't automatically pull out the meaning, if you know the pa'al meaning, you can automatically pull out the pu'al or the hitpa'el. It might vary slightly, but we want to understand that these uh, are foundational. They underlie the translating, underlie the, the meanings of the words, and just become used to the idea uh, that they exist and that they affect the meaning that, that you will see different prefixes, suffixes, and infixes that those, uh, those and the vowels can tell you what binyan you're looking at. Let's just get used to all these ideas, and then we'll get into more depth on the conjugations and how they work. I hope this has been helpful to you. Uh, while you're still studying, remember to see al-Hashemayim. Keep your eye on the sky. Your redemption draweth nigh. Shalom.